Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, coming here in our very intimate um, online exhibit launch. Um, I want to introduce myself and uh, the class. Um, I am Chloe Grant, a student of Professor Manghas for Anthro 119. Um, thank you for attending the launch for our exhibit called Artifacts of Coping. Um, of course, this year has been very hard for us. Um, the previous year, especially us students and the faculty coping with and grappling with online and remote classes. This has forced us into situations that we haven't experienced before. And now welcoming the new year, may be hopeful, but definitely unscathed. During the year, we've amassed a collection of items that reflect. And now uh, we show the life, um, how we coped during the quarantine, early days of quarantine, early days of the lockdown. Um, without further ado, for our welcoming remarks, uh, we want, I want to welcome our classmates, Anton and Maita. Hi, good morning. So on behalf of this Anthropology 119 class, it is Anton and I's pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of Artifacts of Coping, Fragments of Our Lives Here in COVID-19. Yeah, so first of all, we'd like to greet everyone a happy new year. I know it feels like we just started 2020, and yet in the blink of an eye, here we are starting a new year. And to say 2020 was an odd year would be quite the understatement. People say the world seemed to stop. Um, places you've never seen empty were suddenly empty. All these events were getting canceled. We haven't seen each other on campus for months now, with the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic very much real. The times that we are in are historical, as people say, challenging, unfamiliar. The platform we're using right now to meet is a testament to this. Here we are on Zoom instead of in the same room together. And this is just one of the things that is becoming part of our reality. We're scrambling to adapt, as Chloe said. We're feeling low, we're feeling lost, and we look for ways to cope with that. This exhibit documents those ways. Uh, it paints a picture of our lived experiences during this time, cataloging what life looks like or how it has changed since COVID-19. So the essays and collections in this exhibit reflect on how COVID-19 shapes or manifests in our lives in terms of our hobbies, our feelings, how we structure our time and spaces, or simply in terms of contracting the literal disease. So on the Facebook page, you'll find autoethnographic essays by each of us because we too are, or every individual is living through the pandemic. And uh, it also includes time capsules uh, time capsule collections and letters where we address ourselves, our families, or each other. Our collections illustrate life now, be it an artifact of something more universal, like the face shields we can now no longer leave, leave home without, or the alcohol we douse pretty much everything in, or objects that are a little more personal. Hmm. Yes, exactly, Maida. Um, and you know, by no means is the exhibit uh, encompassing, or uh, by no means is it meant to be representative of the entire breadth of uh, quarantine experiences, even just among UP students. Um, but that's fine because part of the point of the exhibit is that um, it shows how even though there are these universal circumstances um, whose global scope is perhaps unprecedented in our lifetimes, um, the way that we as human beings have experienced and coped with these circumstances is often very personal and varies in interesting ways from one individual to the next. And um, that's what we hope viewers of this exhibit will notice um, because that has manifested in the different things contained in the exhibit. Um, the individual values and concerns of the members of this class, um, concerns that relate to safety, uh, identity, sociality, sanity even, um, they're expressed maybe overtly in the letters that we have written to ourselves or to other people a year from now, or in the different aspects of life that our autoethnographic essays focus on but also more subtly in the things that um, we've each chosen to include in our own time capsule collections. Um, ultimately, we hope that the viewers of the exhibit will also be led to reflect on their own experiences over the past year and um, notice the specific human ways that um, they themselves have coped and um, think about why what they themselves would put 
in their own time capsule collections to look back on years after the pandemic has subsided. So once again, thank you everyone. Thank you faculty for coming to our launch and uh, we hope you enjoy the program and the exhibit. Have a good day. Thank you, Maeta and Anton. Um, for now, we are going to call upon our dear professor, Maria Mangahas, who has guided us throughout the semester. Um, a very uh, daunting semester indeed. But with her guidance, and she walked us through um, the class, and now this is our sort of output and a beautiful one at that. We, uh, I, may I call Maria Mangahas um, for some opening remarks? Um, hello. Uh, so I am very pleased to open the exhibit. Uh, can you hear me first of all? I hope I am clear. Yes, okay. So I'm very pleased to open this exhibit done by eight students of Anthro 119. In the beginning, it was expected that they would be uh, anthropology students in their senior year who have done some field work. But we, we all have two students who are from other disciplines and they have also enhanced the class very much. So, so at the end of our, of our class this semester, uh, the idea was to put together an exhibit based on research. And as the semester progressed, although they had all done previous research from a, a field school in our program, it turned out that the papers and essays that they produced um, became more personal and autoethnographic. The other, other thing they did was to collect materials to document the year 2020. And so the concept of this exhibit is that it's, um, it's a very short one. It's only going to be done for this, I think a week. And then we will close the time capsule. It, and um, perhaps open it a year from now. So it's also in sort of timing it to the new year. So a year from now, uh, the plan is to allow the next Anthro 119 students and the public to view this exhibit again and to reflect back on our experiences in this very strange time. I just want to add that it's been a delight also to wear, work with all these uh, young people and, I, and they're actually looking forward now to after UP and graduation. So I wish them all so very well. Everybody has to um, jump into a whole new world after this. Thank you. And Thank welcome. You, Professor. All right. Thank you, Professor Maria. Um, for now, since the start of what I personally dubbed as COVID SEM, we students of Professor Manghas Anthro 119 um, have been working on an essay in a time capsule that would reflect our current realities brought about by the current um, COVID-19 pandemic. Here is Maxine Castro and Precious Pantoja to give us a preview on our timely exhibit. Good morning, everyone. So to start with the virtual um, exhibit, um, we have two parts, the essays and the time capsule. So let me introduce to you the essays that the students have written in. Um, I would like to give a brief summary of what you may look forward in reading. So let me start with uh, Maita Magbuhos. Um, her, uh, her essay's title is The View From and Of the Frontline Quarantine in a Medical Professional's Household. Um, which describes quarantine home and work life with the healthcare worker and goes on to detail what fighting COVID-19 might look like for someone in the med medical field. Next is um, Maxine Castro's uh, transitioning into the new normal life amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. It is an essay of the author's thoughts and experiences amidst the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and a few of the changes she have gone through both in personal and academic life. And then next would have to be um, Anton Cabasa's space dichotomy. Um, it is the author's experiences of altered time perception and society in the pandemic age. Next would have to be Maria Grant's nostalgia Ultra. 
it is the framing of the current COVID-19 pandemic and um, nostalgia. Then, next we have San Imperial's Me, Corona, and a Second Invincible Enemy. It is a personal story of dealing with mental health in quarantine during a pandemic. Then next, we have Jewel Tabion, The Costs of the Pandemic. It is the author's story of a graduating student's crossing over the employment sector and how she prepares for it while dealing with the pandemic. Next, we have Jerome Nervades, um, Fitness During a Quarantine. It is an essay about fitness and how people during the pandemic look for ways to stay fit. And lastly, um, Precious Pantoa stages of experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, a student's life experience from coping up, adjusting, and personal thoughts about enduring the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Um, just to give an example of the essay, um, I'll give an example of Anton Cabalsa's uh, last paragraph from his um, essay space, Dichotinum. It says, the COVID world is a strange one, having evolved well past during being a temporary break from the old order. And while I believe that eventually we'll be able to regain the dynamics and sensibilities of pre-pandemic existence, if not fully informed, then at least in feeling. In the meantime, we have to wrangle with these unfamiliar experiences of noblest time and disembodied society. In trying to make sense of our present lives, we distill them into artifacts, polychronic film strips and tentative moments of disharmony, objects and moments that capture our own pandemic pocket galaxies more succinctly than words than ever. When we finally reach the great beyond and can once again be within six feet of each other, these liminal keepsakes will serve to remind us of our lived of our lived experience of our lived experiences in this context uh, like photographs from a foreign land and took some time to develop our fragments of a time machine you can hold in your hands so let me move on to the um, time capsules for our class so for our time capsules our main um, idea was to collect items that would encapsulate our lives during this COVID-19 pandemic and to eventually also show our varied ways of coping. So with our essay posts in the time, so time capsule collection, on the other hand, is a way to illustrate the ideas and messages of our essays through the items we have gathered. So um, let's just start off with each of our students' work and I'll just present at least one item. And let us start off with Maxine Castro's time capsule. So for each time capsule, there's a letter that you can either address yourself to someone you're close with, can be a relative or a sister or brother or a group of people such as students. So with this, you just have to click see more to read um, the whole letter. And, and if you want to see the items that's related to the letter as well as the students as a post, you can just click here on the picture. And for each picture, there's a caption uh, added into it. So over here, I'll just read it. So a face shield that is lightweight, easily worn, and has a protect protective layer of acetate film that acts as a barrier. In my case, my family and I always wear face shields citizens required in public establishments and in the area where we live in. It also acts as another protective layer from the virus and hopefully lessens the chances of contracting it. So when you look through the other items, you'd see there are some common items such as related to health and boosting the immune system. So others, they added vitamins or planting vegetables such as alubati. And this is uh, Maita Magbuos' time capsule collection and letter. So I'll just present um, one item of hers. So these are alcohol gel bottles. That these are three alcohol gel bottles, one empty and one half empty, and one still full. Only never saw a particular need for them in prior years prior, but has since been using them as a disinfecting measure. 
So other common items are basically to protect yourself from the virus, such as face shields and such as this, the apple gel. So for others, like um, Anton Cabal's capsule, time capsule collection and letter, he, he would see here what life was like before the pandemic. So he attached here a picture of the ticket of UT Fair. So before, this is a ticket to one of the days of UT, 2020 UT Fair concert. So before we were able to physically interact with our friends, but now we have to uh, isolate ourselves in order to lessen the chances of spreading the disease. So in here, you can see that in our time capsule, there's discontinued activities and plans that are put into a halt because of the pandemic. Um, next is for Chloe's uh, time capsule collection. I'll just present one here. Okay. This is the essay post. So this is uh, Chloe's time capsule collection and letter. So this one photo of her, it says here, a photo of myself along with my bicycle, which I bought during quarantine in order to get around and for fitness. So there, with the quarantine, you're also able to see how some students are able to um, acquire new habits in routine because of the pandemic. This is uh, Than's work and I'll just show one item. So this one is uh, the wooden dating palette is an old possession of the contributor, which is Tan. It's a reminder of discontinued activities due to the spread of the virus in the Philippines. Prior to the quarantine, the contributor attended a weekly painting workshop. The painting is still being used by the contributor at home as a leisure activity. Second to the last would be Jewel's time capsule collection letter. So with some other time capsule collection, we see our reliance on online world, especially such as online businesses. So here, there's a collection of food deliveries uh, that she collected because there are several food stores closed down and she was also into the online business. So in the caption it says, there has been a surge of online businesses in the country. Many people, including me, want an extra source of income and you find online selling as a profitable way to earn money. So this is also um, Jerome's register where she collected uh, shopping receipts. So receipt for bathrooms and clean, cleaners. So there's receipt also for stickers and so on. So with that, um, she relied on buying online to get their essentials. So there's also in the last part, there's a receipt for face masks as well. Lastly, this is Precious's uh, time capsule collection. I just click on. So this is. Um, with her and her friends. So it says here, I went outside to deliver some of the food I prepared for some of my friends. I delivered directly to them because if she can pay for my place to my friend's place would be more expensive. I delivered it to them and did their advice and will be here only the snacks from the food. So that's just a few of the items you would see if you navigate through our exhibit. So to fully see everything, you can uh, just start on any post of our students. And that's the end of the uh, quick tour.
Thank you, Maxine and Precious. So as we saw from our essay posts and time capsule entries, we really tried to collect them not just as individuals, but as students of UP Diliman, who are currently, some of, our, some of us are very far from the campus. Some of us are currently residing in a country. So when we tried to um, collect our time capsule, we had that in mind. And so we saw earlier how um, some of us students had prior engagements with UP and was cut short because of the first lockdown in March of 2020. And now we are trying to hope um, that all goes well and we might go back to the campus that we miss so much. Um, may I introduce Madame Madeleine Nandicho? Who, had, um, who is a 2020 field school uh, di director. She had a previous um, opportunity to preview the exhibit um, and may I call her um, to provide her personal observation regarding the online exhibit. Hello, magandang umaga sa lahat. Binimitahan uh, ako ni Mama Lia para magbigay ng uh, maigising pagbabahagi. Actually, originally di sana tungkol sa naging experience ng AFS 2020. No, dahil marami sa mga mag-aaral sa ANJA 119 ay bahagi ng AFS. Pero nung nag-review ako kahapon ng exhibit, nakita ko nga na marami sa mga ito ay mga personal experiences ninyo. No, pero bagaman ang laman ng mga time capsule ay hindi nakabatay sa mga AFS papers, um, habang tinutunghayan ko at minabasa ang bawat post, masasabi kong nakarelate pa rin ako sa inyong mga ibinahagi. Ang mga material na bagay na inyong ipinose tulad ng mga face shield, mask, uh, maraming bote ng alcohol, mga zoom link para sa inyong mga meeting at mga klase, um, mga halaman, uh, mga bisikleta, uh, listahan ng k-drama na inyong pinanood, uh, screenshot ng mga video call kasama ang mga kaibigan, ay mga bagay na katulad ng sinabi kanina sa opening ni na Anton, um, ito ay mga personal ninyong gamit no, at bahagi ng inyong sariling karanasan. So balit masasabi ko siguro na dahil ang mga produktong ito ay um, mga produkto rin ng kasalukuyang karanasan natin, ang mga ito ay um, nakaugnay din sa karanasan ng iba. No, ang mga bagay na ito, bagaman may bitbit na may bitbit na silang kahulugan para sa atin, maaaring um, may dala pa rin mga simbolo. No, halimbawa, simbolo ng kalinisan, ng pagiging ligtas, na ating kalungkutan, ng pag-asa, o katulad ng tulo ng inyong exhibit ay ng ating um, ways of coping, o ng ating kapayahang malagbasan, mapaglabanan, at mapagtagumpayan ang hamon ng kasalukuyang panahon. Um, ang pandemya ito ay nagbigay sa atin ng pagkakataon na magbahagi ng mga bagay tungkol sa ating sarili. Katulad ng inyong mga isinulat na autoestography, uh, yung inyong mga essay. Sapagat sa panahon na ito, um, wala tayo masyadong choice, di ba? Hindi tayo pwedeng uh, magsiyasat ng malapitan sa buhay ng ibang tao. Um, kung kaya naman, Natipilitan tayong mas mag-reflect sa ating mga sariling karanasan at magsulat tungkol sa mga ito. Um, ito ay isang bagay na mahirap gawin dahil mahirap ibukas ang sarili at ibunyag ang nararamdaman ng emosyon, alindangan o pangamba na tinitingnan ng iba bilang kahinaan ng tao o kaya naman sa akademik sa akademikong uh, pagtingin, maaring tingnan hindi sila tipikong datos. So balit ang mga bagay na ito, ang ating mga ang inyong mga naging refleksyon ay maaaring pagsimula ng lubos na pagkakilala sa sarili um, at pag-unawa sa sariling pamayanan, kayo din sa lalong malawak na komunidad. Uh, at ito ang mismo esensya ng ating disiplina, ang antropolohiya. Uh, marami tayong natutunang mga bagong pamamaraan ng pananaliksik. Halimbawa sa AFS, may mga gumamit ng video call, phone call, chat, personal diaries, di ba? Meron mga daily one-liner na hiningi natin sa ating mga informant. At um, ito rin yung pag-e-exhibit via Facebook no, na isang 
medyo bagong bagay. At bagaman lahat ng ito ay hindi naman talaga uh, bago, nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na i-practice ang mga ito sapagkat ito ang akma sa kasalukuyang konteksto. At lahat ng mga ito ay magiging mga dadag na kakayahan at kaalaman na babaunin natin sa gagawin nating pananaliksik sa hinaharap kahit na matapos na ang pandemya. Kaya binabati ko lahat ng mga miyembro ng bilang uh, mga AFS 2020, <laughs> lahat ng mag-aaral ng Anthro 119, ngayon din kay uh, Ma Maria, sa pagsasagawa ng napakahalagang proyektong ito. At siguradong ito ay magiging bahagi ng mga mahahalagang tala ng kasaysayan kapag binalikan ng ating mga future self itong mga ito sa hinaharap. Yun lang, pagbati mo di sa lahat. Maraming pong salamat, Miss Madeline. So, so there you go. Um, now, few folks might have questions about the essay and time capsule entries. Um, we will begin our open forum section headed by Jonathan Imperial and Julian Tabion. So good morning, everyone. We would like to thank again for the informative and interesting observations from Mam Landito. And now we have come to the next part of our program, which is the open forum portion. Um, if you would like to ask a question, simply raise your hand through the reaction tab on Zoom or simply type a, a capital Q on the chat box. All right, may I ask a question to the students and to Ms. Maria as well? Um, do you think, why do you think po it's so important to preserve or sort of document in, a, in the manner of a time capsule an age or a period such as the COVID-19 pandemic, especially its early, early days? Why is it important to keep a document of that? Any of the students may answer. Um, I have an answer. Hi, Jonathan. Go ahead. The question was about the importance of documenting uh, during the early days of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I find that it's important because of, well, in, uh, in terms of research, uh, it helps that we know how people cope and how they behave during a crisis. Like, for example, how in America, they ran out of toilet paper <laughs> because of panic buying and uh, even just uh, policies that we need to strengthen or taking the law in the future to better prepare for a similar scenario into the future. Uh, like uh, sa personal kong essay, which is mental health, uh, I found na articles are, ano, dito. you can see articles naman on the internet saying na uh, kulang yung ano, mental health service providers natin and there have been uh, a surge of calls sa mga mental health hotlines na hindi uh, properly tao dito na nabibigyan ng service. So, things like that I think will help, of course, society uh, and the nation to help it. Am I allowed to? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to add the an observation that the title of the exhibit has to do with coping, uh, because the ex what in the in the reflections on the experience of last year of 2020, one of the there was like a turning point in the class after the typhoons and 
it was like one thing on top of another where it, this seemed to be one of the um, basically things that we were struggling with was just to cope. And the, so one of the, the objectives of the exhibit became to, for the museum to function also as a therapeutic space for the students. And so I think this year, 2020, one of the things that's different about it is, is that there's this struggle to, uh, to cope with a new, new normal. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think that's one of the, one of the main reasons why it's a time capsule idea is because it's a very historically different period and, and uh, a new period. And so everything is new and documenting it at the beginning uh, allows you to, uh, is, is also documenting this feeling of going through the, the, the adjusting, the coping. Uh, and uh, that might be very different this year, 2021. I don't know, but the, the idea of a time capsule is to, to capture the moment. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we have a message from Miss Mary Rosales. Um, she said that this is a great idea um, and that she will encourage her grandchildren to sort of emulate this practice. Um, she asks if the students of um, Anthro 119 prepare a simple set of instructions for families spanning the country or the world to develop their own 2021 artifacts. That is very cool indeed. Um, I see perhaps the students can sort of make a little manifesto or um, instructions to do in the future. Um, she asks whether um, they can compile like three of the already given um, items such as alcohol, face mask, etc., and provide more um, more than a few other items. Thank you, um, Miss Mary, for that um, message and as well as question we can ask our students. I think that is a good idea. But the process in which we tried to collect was very simple. It was in the context of our personal students who are in sort of intransients, intransient in a sense that they are they are away from the campus. Um, and also, of course, our personal experience in side um, items in which one can collect must be in the context um, of which um, tied to their their experience in their local. Um, I think that makes a very interesting. Um, idea. I wonder what other students from other countries or students from um, maybe younger students, um, maybe students in the grade school, students from uh, high school, elementary, and preschool. I wonder what kind of time capsule they might produce. So, any more questions? Um, uh, from Louis, if I yeah. may add them then. Um, so thank you very much, ma'am, for, for that suggestion. And uh, I just like to, to reflect on the process that, that our class did for collecting. Um, well, for me personally, uh, when we were assigned this this um, collection, at the start, there was like this pressure to make sure that all facets of, of life in the pandemic are represented. You know, you know because you have, the, you have the medical aspect, you have the, the mobility aspect, and everything else that um, factors into the whole ecosystem that we're living in right now. Um, and it was kind of overwhelming to make sure that it was all represented. Um, but then later on, I kind of realized that uh, it's also impossible in a way to really uh, be impartial about the things that you collect, uh, I suppose. Na parang in, in, in the choice, in the, in the process, or in the act of curating a collection, um, 
you pay attention, there's the, there's the reflexivity of paying attention to the things that you choose and what that says about um, what was important to maintain or what was important to pay attention to as you're going through the through the pandemic. So I guess in, in formulating a kind of guidebook or in a process that we can share with other students, other other individuals in making their own time capsules, maybe it's more important not to give like a checklist of things that you should include, but rather the questions that we ourselves as students um, asked ourselves in deciding what to include in the time capsule. So what did we, what were the factors that made us decide to include something or to not include something <laughs> and to kind of express the importance of it being included in the capsule. So those questions that we that we are that we asked ourselves. Those are questions that other people in other countries in different situations can also um, reflect upon and consider in formulating the things that they want to remember and look back upon um, years from now, even decades from now, I suppose. Indeed. Thank you, Anton. Hi, this is Mary. Can I? Uh, can Hi. I? Can I add a comment? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, no, I uh, I really liked your responses, especially Anton's. Um, I th I think in the context of anthro, as you know, I think most of you, I'm very involved in engaged anthro, and I was trying to think what's the engaged aspect of this. It's all out there, ready to take. For example, uh, all right, you have gained a lot of experience, and as Anton just pointed out, you no certain thing, just to be able to say, no checklist, just sit and think. These are the kinds of questions you have to go through and maybe you'll think of your own because you have different situations. But just that, you know, that, that kind of knowledge that came from your experience that you now transfer to others who may have actually similar interests, never thought about it, but now that they see, hey, we could do a time capsule, that's fantastic. And, and they would want to learn from you, your experience, and then develop their own. So, you know, in the context that now in Anthro, there's a strong pressure for knowledge generation is co-production, you know, with the people you're working with, co-implementation, co-creation. So that notion in this, for this project I, is wonderful in the sense it could spread uh, very greatly just if you would put together some of your own thinking in how others might do it based on your experience, but they have to create their own. That's very clear, okay? So thank you. I think this is a really, a, a, I compliment my colleague Maria Mangahas and all the other faculty plus the students who, you know, really devoted new kinds of thinking. And that's what this COVID thing is doing, you know? Let me just say from my own family experience, one of the big things is people came out very creatively with things they would never have done before because they're all working. These are all young adults who are my grandchildren. Now one knows how to make cable stitch sweaters, very complicated. Others have you know, gone into cooking new kinds of culinary de delicious dessert you know, with blend because they're half Filipino, blending Filipino with uh, you know, American type uh, palettes and experimenting. I mean, all of those so dynamic, it would be important for the family to capture that so that in next year or in 10 years, they can say, you know, that terrible time, but nonetheless, this is what it brought out in us. There were tragedies, but there were also amazing innovations. And for people to capture that in a family is what keeps them united and going together as a family. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Miss Mary. We definitely see the value of having sort of a family time capsule that is contextual to the family and as well as um, to their um, community at large. And we hope the Artifacts of Coping as an online exhibit does just that. Um, uh, sort of knowledge generating um, collaborative work that we hope to see in other classes as well, just not just in anthro. Um, this is not just um, specific to this class. This may be well made by 
um, students, um, young students, younger than us, um, professors, um, folks that are not in the universe many and is um, reflected reflect um, reflected in our work um, so may I call for uh, closing remarks our esteemed chair of the UP Diliman Department of Anthropology Professor Carlos Tatel Jr. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, maraming salamat uh, sa pag-imbita sa akin dito, sa colleagues, sa uh, co-faculty ko dito para dumalo sa inyong uh, activity. Pagpati kay Professor uh, Maria Mangahas uh, sa pag-organize niya ng ganitong uh, uh, klaseng uh, Uh, culminating activity para sa kanyang klase sa 119. Pagbati rin sa mga inyo, mga estudyante ng 119 dahil sa uh, effort at uh, oras na binigay nyo dito sa activity. At uh, makaasa kayo na um, dahil ito ay internet-based no online, no? so makaasa kayo na marami pang makakakita nito at mababalik-balikan. Ito siguro yung beauty ng uh, proyekto nyo na hindi siya uh, mawawala agad. No, pwede siyang balik-balikan. Pwede siyang maging reference ng ibang mga estudyante, ng ibang mga tao. At uh, uh, sinasabi nyo nga kanina, uh, uh, paano, siguro mag maging ma inspiration din sa ibang mga klase <clears throat> na nagbumuha ng ganitong klase ng mga uh, gawain. Um, gusto kong uh, magbigay ng konting punto tungkol sa collecting uh, dahil uh, nabati ko yung uri ng uh, pagkukolekta niyo. So, Uh, siguro ang natutunan nyo rito ay yung pagkukolekta ay bagaman tungkol to sa artifacts no? artifacts, mga bagay pero actually yung kinukolekta nyo ay memories no? experiences, memories ang hirap gawing uh, material ng memory ang hirap gawing uh, tangible ng experience but with, uh, with these artifacts na natipon nyo somehow naging uh, 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 empirical, no? naging tangible yung mga alaala nyo. Just like any other collecting, uh, you can collect anything, di ba? Pwede kahit na ano yan. So, in a way, what you've done is curating. Naglagay kayo ng kaayusan, order, uh, kahulugan sa random experiences, random memories, things. So, at uh, yung kahulugan naman talaga na yun, yun ang pinakamalaga. Kasi the, the next question uh, tungkol doon, nasusunod doon ay makahulugan ba siya kanino? Well, sinabi na niyo naman sa beginning na ito ay o, uh, ethno or auto. Uh, may pagkarinig ko. No? Sarili niyong karanasan. Sarili niyong karanasan. So, there you go. The answer is, according to your own context. Okay? So, it, so kung ibang tao naman ang gagawa, uh, kagaya ng pinoint out ni Prof. Mary Reselis, pag ibang tao naman ang gagawa nito, they might uh, come up with a different set of things, uh, objects, memories, experiences. So, curating is all about giving meaning, order, doon sa mga pinokolekta niyo. Um, makatutulong din kung uh, susundan natin uh, yung uh, uh, suggestion ni Prof. Mary na may malaki, mas malaki pang konteksto sa, sa, sa personal context. So kung ikukonekta natin yon sa mas malaking uh, broader connection, ika nga, 
uh, we look closely but we connect broadly. So yung broad connection na yun, uh, makikita natin na yung ating individual experience, uh, personal object, ay nakatali pala sa mas malaking sistema, mas malaking uh, konteksto. At yung konteksto ng uh, society in general na kinapapalooban ng mga kinolekta natin. So, uh, but of course, umpisa ito eh. Itong personal uh, decisions na pumili ng mga object ay first step at napakagandang uh, 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 exercise, no? intellectual exercise para makita natin na uh, hindi lang pala basta-basta ang mga decision natin. Kaya first step, ang susunod na step ay to connect broadly. Uh, so, uh, uh, sa susunod ko naman punto uh, na itong COVID talaga <laughs> ay nagbukas ng, uh, sa atin para maging creative, kagaya nga ng sinabi ni Prof. Mary, ni Prof. Uh, Maria Mangahas, at sinabi nyo rin, at pinakita nyo rin kung gaano tayo pwede maging creative sa panahon na to. Pero paala, siguro paalala lang din sa ating mga sarili na ito, maasa tayo, lahat tayo umaasa na ang ganitong uri ng uh, uh, pamamaraan ay uh, bilang coping, no? coping sa panahon ngayon. Pero sana, maasa tayo, hindi ito uh, permanente. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, umaasa ako, umaasa tayo na babalik din tayo maski pa paano sa, sa kahit, uh, kahit, kahit, kahit hindi 100% na pre-COVID situation kahit, kahit babalikan lang natin yung nakasanay natin dahil uh, uh, hindi mabubuhay ang discipline natin kung hindi natin face to face or close uh, you know close in proximity with our with our uh, uh, um, resource persons ganyan uh, interviewees ganon yung lipunan na gusto nating gawa ng panaliliksik sana Balang araw, mabalikan din natin yon Dahil ang sitwasyon natin, mga sa ako, temporary lang. At hindi natin isipin na et, ito na yon Ito na yung ating bagong disiplina. <laughs> ito naman ay personal ko lang na uh, uh, aspiration na hindi tayo masasanay masyado. Na, pwede naman pala ganito na. So ito na yung anthropology. Uh, pero commendable na nakakagawa tayo na ng creative means para ma-exercise pa rin natin yung ating yung yung ating um, academic training and, and ganoon pero ako umaasa ako na temporary lang to at babalik din tayo maski papaano maski hindi 100% pero ma-reclaim lang natin yung uh, kung ano yung discipline natin kung ano yung ethnography kung ano yung museology during the pre-pandemic times so So, uh, bilang pangwakas nga, uh, siyempre, abot-abot na pagbati sa inyong lahat. Kay Professor Maria Mangahas, sa colleagues ko na gumagawa, sa mga, mga professors nyo sa iba't ibang mga antroclasses na gumagawa ng ganitong culminating activities. At sa inyong mga sudyante na uh, napapakahirap na mag-cope at uh, manatiling excellent no, sa, sa academic uh, activity. Uh, pag ito, uh, yung sa performance nyo, sa, sa academic, uh, sa academics nyo. So, maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat rin po, um, Professor Tatal Jr. So, yung gusto ko lang po ibigyan ng um, sort of emphasis yung ibang posts ng time capsule natin dahil hindi lang po siya uh, nagbibigay ng, ng konteksto sa COVID-19 pandemic mismo, pero pinapakita rin niya po kung papaano um, yung mga panahon ng pre-COVID at saka post-COVID. So, in a way, pinapakita din po dito yung before and after. May mga post po dito uh, um, Anton, uh, 
Jordan and my that made it. So, do you know our opening launch of Artifacts of COVID, Coping, Fragments of Our Lives During COVID-19? Gusto ko pong pasalamatan si Chair Carlos Tata Jr., si Ms. Landisho, si Professor Reginald Cruz para pag-set up nitong session. Maraming salamat po. Ms. Mary for attending this session. My fellow classmates who have been tirelessly working upon, uh, for this exhibit. And of course, our dear Professor Maria. And para sa exhibit po natin, maging open po ito for a week. Um, it is intended to be very interactive. And I encourage everyone to visit the Facebook page, Artifacts of Coping, and comment, interact, uh, share the post. And we will very much engage with every comment or question upon each e Professor Maria, that's it. Sorry, my um, my Zoom connection is again shaky. So I didn't hear everything you said. It was sort of choppy. Um, but I also want to add my thanks and appreciation. And um, we will seal the time capsule. Did you say that? Next yes, week, and then we will discover it again next year and see how we feel then. So thank you. Samantha. Um.